Hi guys, Tima Ferret here, and I'm trying a new lighting thing to see if I can work with the blurry problem on my camera. Uh, lighting, I think, is the reason why it blurs. So, if I have a massive shadow behind me, I apologize. I'm still working through this and trying to figure out how I can make the blur stop. Anyway, today, we're going to be talking about dehydration. And dehydration, people talk about it because it's important, but I'm going to be breaking this down into the, the exact things you need to know about it, what dehydration can cause, what to do, and how to prevent it. So the first thing that everyone needs to know are the basis of dehydration in general. And the biggest thing are where your sweat points are. Now, when you're first in, you would think that your biggest sweat point would be your head. It's not, actually. Your forehead, yes, sweats a lot, but it's not a major sweat point. Now, what a sweat point is, it's complicated. But, the best thing for first years to know is it's a sweat point where if you prevent that area from sweating, you're going to have problems. Your big ones are your hands, your feet, your armpits, and your groin, aka your leg pits. You, you kind of see a theme here. And yes, your forehead is, is a minor one. So, why do I bring this up? I bring this up because a lot of people, and this is just people in general, like to use antiperspirants to deal with, you know, sweat, body odor. And when it comes to dehydration and overheating and fursuiting, this actually is a bad idea. And the reason is, is that it stops your sweat points from working. Particularly the ones under your arms and whether or not you use an antiperspirant for your groin area because in a full body suit, some people choose to do that. Antiperspirants clog your pores. That's how they work. They physically prevent your pores from producing sweat because it just gets backed up. This stops your body from being able to use its normal heat regulatory measures. Now, if you're doing regular exercise, you can usually compensate for that. So it's not as big of a deal. But when you're in a giant, constricting, fluffy suit that has almost no airflow, this is a huge problem. So my best advice to especially newer fursuiters who have no idea what's going on, don't use antiperspirants. Use non-antiperspirant sports deodorants. Uh, a good brand is Old Spice. Uh, and Axe makes a few. They're hard to find. I'm not going to lie. They are hard to find. So, now that we've got that out of the way, I'm not talking about odor management. I'm talking about dehydration. So, how do we prevent dehydration? Obviously, you drink. And what do you drink? That's important. You need to drink your water. But, more importantly, you need to drink your Gatorade, your Powerade, your electrolyte-giving fluids. Because you're sweating. And sweating is very important. But sweating makes you lose salts and other things that electrolyte drinks give you back. That's very important. Water is important too. But then you have people like me, who are fluoride intolerant. Yes, I'm fluoride intolerant, which means I can't drink most U.S. water because all of our water is fluoridated because we have some sort of fetish for fluoride. It's awful. So what do I do? Well, I will typically drink electrolyte-based drinks. I will drink juices because that's the next best thing. And because I'm me, I'll typically also drink milk. 
I do not recommend that last one. I only do it because I'm a special case, and also because I have horrible acid reflux and milk actually treats that. I'm not going to get into how that works. It's science, okay? If you're curious, you can ask in the comments and I'll explain, but I'm not going to get into that just right here. But those are my personal alternatives to water. Now, I can get non-fluoridated water. It's hard to get, but I can get it. But I have to bottle it, make sure that it's slightly chilled, and it, it can be a pain in the ass to travel with on the fly. So the, the electrolyte-based drinks and your juices are your better bet if you have a water issue. Now, if you're not drinking water because you think water is disgusting, get over yourself. You don't have an excuse. Now, if you have your drink situation settled, good. You're on your way. Next thing you gotta do is you gotta make sure that your body can regulate your heat right. And this is where the sweat points come in. The best way to do that is to wear Under Armour. Some people have questioned why Under Armour is even significant. It's significant because it uses your sweat points to your advantage. It allows them to work while you're in an encompassing costume or any kind of sports gear that would stop you from being able to sweat properly. It gives you that ability back essentially. So, what kind of arm Under Armour do you need? Well, what you don't need is brand Under Armour. I personally use brand Under Armour. It's not necessary. What you do need is you need heat gear, compression gear. Why heat gear? Because heat gear is for the heat. Cold gear is for the cold. I don't know why people get confused about this. It's not confusing. If you use cold gear, you're going to die. <laughs> it's going to be bad. <laughs> Don't use cold gear. Check your compression gear before you put it on. And having a compression gear ball clava in your head, as well as the ball clava your head may be built on, is also a good idea. Because it, it keeps things cleaner in here. And it helps you with your sweat. So, now you have your Under Armour, you have your proper deodorant, you have your water. You should be good, right? Wrong. Some people need more. That's where cool vests come in. I personally use the easy cool down cool vest. That's just me though. There are plenty of other people who like to use other kinds of cool vests. But if you're noticing that Under Armour just isn't doing it for you, alone, cool vests are a great way to just push yourself to that next level. They're a bit pricey, yes, but it's a worth it, the investment's worth it, absolutely. I will never go back. Ever. So, now, we need to go into the dangers of dehydration. Because those are all the things that you can do to keep yourself hydrated. And then there are the dangers. And there are three main dangers to fursuiters and dehydration. And that is heat exhaustion, heat stroke, and shock. What is heat exhaustion? Heat exhaustion is what I consider what every fursuiter goes through. If you don't get heat exhaustion, you're not doing it right. <laughs> All heat exhaustion means is that your body is becoming weak and is starting to not respond because of heat. That's all it means. Any fursuiter in existence understands this. They've experienced this. Heat stroke is another matter. Heat stroke is a main reason why I warn against antiperspirants. Heat stroke means that your body 
has become completely unable to regulate its temperature. You basically have become a cold-blooded animal. Your body cannot do it for you anymore. You have to do it. So, what do you do with heat stroke? Well, the first thing, get out of the fucking fursuit. <laughs> that seems like the most logical thing, but a lot of people don't do it. Of course, if you faint before then, then someone's call 911. If you see a passed out fursuiter, they're not responding, call 911. They may be in shock or heat stroke and they could die. And I'm not exaggerating, they could actually die. Both shock and heat stroke are deadly. So, first thing you gotta do is get out of the fursuit. Even just taking off the head will help immensely. Because the head's one of the hottest things. So, being able to remove the head will remove a lot of that pressure of heat that's on your body that it can't regulate. Just because your head is not the most major sweat point on your body doesn't mean that it doesn't trap a lot of heat. There's, there's, there are levels of biology here that are very difficult to explain. So first thing, get out of the suit. Second thing, I found this to help with both heat, stroke, and shock. So I'm just gonna mention it now and this will apply to shock as well, so I'm not going to mention it there. Take a lukewarm shower. Not hot, not cold. Something that is of regular body temperature. This will help to lower your body's temperature to where it's supposed to be without shocking you. Because then you might go into shock, and that's worse. What do you do after that? Rest. You need to give your body time to reach homeostasis again. It's extremely important. You may want to try drinking and eating during this time. Eating is very important when you get into these conditions. And just when you're first eating in general, you need to eat. Not eating can cause some of these conditions. It doesn't cause dehydration, but it can cause these conditions to arise. So. What is shock then? Shock is when your circulatory system fails in some way. This is the thing I went into at ACE. It's when something doesn't work right anymore. Usually blood flow to the brain doesn't work right anymore. When it comes to dehydration at least. In other cases, like if you break a leg or an arm, Blood flow can stop working there, and you can go into shock in those areas of your body. It can vary. So, what do you do? Same first steps. Get out of the suit, take a lukewarm shower, rest. Uh, judge your condition. Because you might need to go to the hospital. This is dealing with your circulation. You may not be able to get it back to normal on your own. Now a shock, you have to eat. You need electrolyte drinks, because you need to get your blood working again. You need to get your heart working again. These are extremely important things to do. These are not options. And if all else fails, if you feel like you're about to faint, if your vision's fading, call 911. Go to a doctor, because these conditions are fatal. Do not avoid going to the doctor just because you don't want to pay a bill. I mean, yes, people can be in horrible financial situations. I understand that. But this is your life on the line in a situation you more than likely cannot control yourself. If it gets to that point, if you start fainting, you're done. You cannot control this. You're over. So, this is talked about a lot, dehydration. But the severity of what can happen to you 
is not talked about a lot. The little things that you're supposed to do that make a world of difference, like deodorants, those aren't talked about. All of these things put together make the world of difference. So hopefully, this will allow you to fursuit safer. Now, if you are concerned about heat stroke, shock, anything like that, leave it in the comments down below. If you have any specific questions, I can help you. I, I'm not here trying to talk out my ass. I'm here from experience and from the experiences of others. So please, stay safe. And remember, in the end, if you need medical assistance, seek it. Because your life is more important than anything else. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Bye!